beliefs. And if you just believe in it, you believe in yourself, even though other people might not believe in you, you believe it in yourself, that eventually, eventually you'll get there. My name is Mike Bartram. Um, I'm the head football coach at Meigs High School and also Meigs County Commissioner. Actually from uh, Rutland, which is just uh, right out the road, uh, about, about five, seven miles. Uh, grew up kind of in the country, um, which is, as, as we well know, Appalachia, but uh, I grew up in probably big time Appalachia out that way. And uh, just ab absolutely loved where I grew up uh, in Rutland and uh, went to school at uh, Rutland Elementary and then um, went to junior high, which was back then junior high, seventh and eighth grade at Middleport, which was still Meg's junior high in Middleport, Ohio. And then uh, Meg's High School, which is right here. So I uh, graduated in 1988. My father, um, he would work all day, and then my mom was a housewife. So we had three kids. My brother Rory is 10 years older, and my sister is eight years older. She's Beth. And then here come eight years later, Mistake Michael. And that's what they called me for a lot of years. They might not say that, but uh, I was the mistake. You know, but anyway, every, you know, I wasn't, but God, God knew. And um, so growing up um, as, a, as a young kid, um, I, just, I, I just knew that uh, that brother and sister instilled in me, you know, who I am. And my dad instilled in me who I am to this day. Uh, to me helping him on the roofs, because they didn't have cranes to put the shingles up on the roof. You know, when I was a kid, I was the one carrying him up the ladder, you know, and he had me do that for a reason. Because um, anybody else could have done it, but he had, he had me do it, and my, you know, a buddy or two. And so, um, growing up, you know, with that family, and, and, and my family's just so special. I'd put my brother and sister, my mom and dad against anybody. You know, I just, they're just awesome people. And um, I believe that, that they instilled in me um, who I am to this day. And I believe that um, uh, no matter what, um, that uh, God always has our back, and that dad um, ha just kind of shaped me in, in who I am. Every year my father would say all the time, um, until this day, he still says it at 80 years old, uh, whatever sport I was in, that's what I like the best. Dad, I love that the best. Mom, I love that the best. And, um, and then you go to those three sports and you know it's a little different now. You know, kids kind of have to choose, which is kind of sad because I really enjoyed all three sports. But then football took his presidents and, and I was fortunate enough to um, you know, do some okay things in high school, uh, played quarterback uh, for a couple years, my junior senior year. So I went to Marsh University um, on a full ride scholarship. So what a blessing that was for my family and for myself. And uh, the first day, first day, I had to throw uh, probably five or 10 balls in the morning practice at six in the morning, whatever it was. And then and the afternoon practice comes around and uh, George Chomp was our coach and uh, again I'd train my behind off all summer through, through a football through a tire at, at 50 yards I trained my behind off to try to prove to them that I could play quarterback at 6 4 2 10 whatever it was but I wasn't strong I was very weak because um, we didn't we didn't lift a lot in high school at that time and so I, I go down there thinking I'm gonna be this quarterback in the second practice Coach Chomp says, uh, Bartram, come here. And I said, yes, sir. So I run up there. He's like, will not you go down to the tight ends and see how you like that? I'm like, oh, man. So I didn't say anything, yes, sir. So I go down to the tight ends. And then that night, you know, crying like a baby in my dorm room down there in Twin Towers East. And um, I called my dad and I said, dad, I said, they didn't tell me the truth. They said they'd give me a chance. And I threw a couple balls this morning. That was it. And he said, son, the only way you're getting home is thumbing. Uh, but I wasn't about to hitch a ride up back home. And so it was the best thing ever in my life to stay there at Marshall. And you know, God takes us care of us and all these things and my whole life that's happened, um, just like everybody's life. Somebody told me 20, 30 years ago, it's not what happens in your life, it's how you deal with it. And that's what I believe. And it's not what happens because whether you get an A on a test or an F on a test, it's how you deal with that A and it's how you deal with that F. And um, so I try to always deal with it the right way. and. and um, kind of just went through the Marshall thing and, and blew out my knee, tore my ACL, PCL, LCL, almost severed my artery. Uh, that was when Coach um, Donnan came in in 1990 in the spring game. Some of my best buddies, you know, green versus white. Took my knee out and um, didn't mean to, just one of those freak things and it happened for a reason. You know, so I had total reconstruction and missed a whole year of football and came back my junior senior year, but God, God sent Coach Briner. Coach Briner came from the Colts. He was with Coach Donnan. In 1990, he said, you need to learn how to snap. 
and so that was that was my niche you know that I could actually snap a football between my legs a little bit and uh, so I did that my junior senior year and plus played tight end and uh, was fortunate enough to make it in the NFL a few years. You talked about um, the adversities you faced when you initially got there thought you were going to play quarterback. How did you deal with that? What did you rely on? I, I would say faith but it really wasn't because I, I wasn't where I needed to be in my faith uh, but God knew you know God had my back even though I didn't have his at that time in my life. Um, so number one, my family, you know, my friends, uh, Dom, Dominic Anzavino, John Sukoc, Dominic Botto. Um, there was a lot of other people in that mix, but um, you know, those were the three guys I hung out with the most. All the guys that were there um, were still a big part of it, but you know, you have those rocks that you go to, and we talk about rock solid um, here at Meg's Football because of Phil Rath uh, passing away. And, um, I, those were my rocks, and uh, that's kind of how I got through it and knew that, um, you know, I didn't know that saying at that time, um, but, but he did, and he, he just kept working on me, and, and I just, I would keep going to the devotions, I would keep going to the Wednesday night Bible studies, I would do those things, and, and um, you know, if it wasn't for God and family and, and all the people at Marsh University, the training staff, the doctors, you know, that did the surgery, you know, I mean, all those people that, that just, made a difference in my life at that time because that was a turning point you know more than probably going from quarterback to tight end when I blew my knee out that was just like okay and the doctor tells me on the field and um, he said I'll never play football again and um, and so I could take that two ways you know I could say you know what he's right you know I'm not good enough you know I just blew my knee out I'm done and um, the Holy Spirit and, and everything was just coming through me, my friends, and I didn't want to let people down. I wanted to prove to him. And to this day, um, I've used probably five or ten of those from getting fired by the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, Marty Schottenheimer, to Bill Belichick, to guys that I got fired. I mean, I wasn't good enough for them, and that's fine. But it wasn't fine to me. It was fine to them because they're moving on because it's a business. But to me, I use it as motivation. And that's what we tell our kids. That's what I tell my own biological kids. It's not what happens in your life, it's how you deal with it. And you can either use it as a crutch the rest of your life, or you can use it as motivation and prove them wrong. The best you can. And you might not, but you're going to do everything you can to do it. And I think that's, um, that was maybe the telltale sign there. A little bit, you know, very trivial with, you know, getting moved to, to quarterback. But when you, when you have a devastating thing like that happen, that, um, that, you know, almost severed my artery where I was going to lose half my leg, you know, type thing, that, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. So they gave me that experience of going to the AFC Championship game. And so I was fortunate enough to be in a couple Super Bowls, go to three or four NFC, AFC Championship games through my years. And I believe that was God's plan, you know, to say this is what it's like. This, this is high expectations. And we talk to our kids, my own kids all the time. Don't be satisfied with mediocrity. That, that's 70% that's of the world. It's 80% of the world. You know, be that other 20%. 